Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever ever you are. Welcome to the channel. My name is Leticia and today we are starting a series. What do you think about that? Is makeup shorty. Well, that's the name so far. If you have a better suggestion, you can, you know, me in the comments later. But what is this about? Basically, short YouTube videos that approach only one part of makeup. Suppose you have to brainstorm foundation or eyeshadow. That's the video you're going for. You don't have to watch the whole thing, the whole face being done. You go for one video that has the information you need. So it's easier and faster for everyone. Today we are talking about foundation, so basically the base makeup. Let's jump right in. Okay, so now my skin prep is done. I could go with that. You see, like, if you look at my skin, you, you're not really seeing like, oh, her cheek is green. It's just neutralized. So I'm good to go like this. Or I can choose to proceed with my makeup. What does my skin need right now? So if I look at my skin, what are the things that I'm not comfortable with and I want a more snatched to look? It's usually my dark circles. I hate them. <laughs> my recommendation here, if you have color corrections to be done, is to go in with a corrector. I know I already use the primer with a color correcting property, but there are also concealers that are correctors. It's not a, just a concealer, it's a corrector because it has a color that is not native to the skin. It's a color that is opposite to the problematic area. In this case, my problematic area is pretty much purple, right? And the opposite of purple is yellow. I don't have a yellow corrector, I'm working on that, but I do have a peach one that is very close in the circle, would be peach, would be like the light orange, which would correct the blue, which works pretty well, I guess. And then we're going with that. If you have brown spots, they read as orange and yellow. That means you need a purple blue corrector. If you have redness, you need a green one. You probably don't have green on your skin that you have to correct with red. So I don't know if you would do it. Awesome. And that's usually how it works. So basically get the circle, the chromatic circle and see what is the area. If you have light skin, that tone needs to be toned down. Don't, I have light skin. I don't go in with orange because that will also deepen the color there. That's not what I want. If you have darker skin, if you're tan or black person you have to go in with more pigment so maybe a peachy wouldn't work you have to go in with like orange otherwise you're just gonna make that part of your skin much lighter and it's gonna look separate from your face again less is more i know i already applied product here so i have to be really careful not to pile up too much see very careful almost no product i barely touched the product on my skin what I'm using here, do you need this brush? No. What is the thing here? It's a kind of sturdy brush, but not too harsh on the skin because the skin can be extremely sensitive and it's small enough to reach into my eyes. My eyes are very small. I always have to opt for medium for very small brushes for the areas of my eyes. In this case, the concealer, you know, it's part of the same area, same thing, it has to be small. This is good for me to, you know, go in and blend. Again, I'm not spreading, I'm tapping and I'm not spreading it to the other areas because I don't need color corrector in the other areas. And if I do that, I'm just going to pile layers and layers of product that are going to look horrible in the end, okay? So slowly, you see, I didn't even take that long actually, it was pretty fast because I didn't use much product because you can always add more makeup you taking it off it's a bud if you go slow you can add more later if you need it you might not need it some products need to be left on the skin so they can soak and warm up so they spread better and they actually release their properties better. It's not the case of this one. And some products, they have to be blended fast because they dry fast. So be careful, know your products. It's a new product, you don't know it. Try it on your hand. I know it's not the same skin, but you're gonna get the gist of it. I look at my face. I could be ready to go out of the door. If I want to proceed with my makeup, I can. If I don't, then I'm ready to go. That's exactly the point. Makeup is there to make us feel better. It's there to conceal or to enhance or to just make you feel prettier however you want in the order you want the way you want so the way you feel comfortable if you don't want to use a product it's fine it's up to you it's up to what you feel good in. so my point here is basically like take these steps 
and use them however you want. It's a bunch of tips, so you can cherry pick them the way you want and you can change them every day if you want. But see, like right now, I'm ready to go out if I need. I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, but I choose to do more because I have to show you guys. <laughs> so now, can you guess what step it is? No, it's not foundation, it's concealer or not. Okay, <laughs> the thing is, concealers and foundations are very similar to each other. Some people use them interchangeably. What? Yes. So concealers usually have more pigmentation. So they are used to conceal because they have more pigmentation. They cover the tone better, right? Okay. Some people use foundation and for them it's enough. Some people use concealer and for them it's enough. Some people change. Me, myself, sometimes I just use concealer. Sometimes I put concealer all over my face. It just spread it in a very thin layer. Sometimes I use only foundation. It depends on what is enough for you to feel good. The tip here is less is more. Again, yes, if you use foundation in your whole face, you will already be covering a lot of things and that means that you won't need to use so much concealer in your face because you already applied the first layer which already gave you coverage in a lot of areas and you most likely are not going to have to apply concealer all over. What you can do too is apply concealer all over and be very sparing if you might need foundation in some places. Both cases you should always go with light layers, very little product and keep building whenever and wherever you need it. So we today are going for foundations first. As we were talking about primer, you have types of foundations. So you have matte, you have natural finish and you have dewy finish. You also have silicone base, oil base and water base. As we said before in the beginning, choose accordingly to what you want. If you have oily skin, go for matte. If you have dry skin, go for dewy. If you have mixed skin, go for natural. I would take all of this and throw away. <laughs> okay, why? There is a recommended thing because if you have oily skin, the matte foundation is going to absorb a little bit of the oil. So what's going to happen is that it's going to mattify your face so much that your skin is going to produce the oils during the day and the oils are going to mix with the matte foundation and it's going to look natural or maybe a little bit dewy in the end of the day. But if you start with a dewy foundation and you have oily skin, it's already going to be shiny and it's going to get only more shiny, 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 shiny. So that's why people recommend it like that. Same thing, if you have dry skin and if you start with a matte foundation and your skin, you know, it's dry, it's not going to produce any oil, it's going to just be like trying to get the moisture out of the foundation, it's going to be cracky, 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 cracky and you're going to look horrible at the end of the day. All of those things are true, but as we've seen, you can always use primers to help your skin and give it a boost so you can moisturize or mattify a little bit if you need to. And most people, realistically speaking, are kind of in the middle, they are not in the extremes. If you are in the extremes, yes, I do recommend that you go for, you know, dewy, dry skin, matte for oily skin. But if you're in the middle, you can play with different things. Me, myself, I have combo skin, a little bit oily, oily in the T-zone, and I love dewy foundations. It's not a problem. Whatever makes you feel good. If you have oily skin and you feel horrible with anything shiny on the skin, of course, don't go for dewy. Go for the matte, you're gonna feel much better. But usually our tastes, they don't necessarily match with our skin type. It's not like, oh, conveniently, I love dewy finishes and I have dry skin. Usually that's not how it goes. So what is the finish you want? The color and tone, which is a whole thing, but usually you should test like here in this area because you have to see if it matches your neck, if it matches your face and go to a natural light area because that's probably the lighting you'll be under doing the most of the day. So that's where you and other people are going to see yourself. So that's when you have to analyze yourself to see if you like it. But I'm not going to touch into color because this video is going to get horribly long. And third, you have to understand how your foundation behaves. So we have very liquidy foundations. We have silicone creamy foundations we have solid foundations. There's a myriad of things. So knowing that will help you know how to apply it to get a better look and not waste so much product. So all of those are matte or natural to matte finish foundations. You've seen most of them in the channel so far. The Rare Beauty one is very famous. For me, it's too dry unless I use illuminizing, moisturizing primers and very thin layer. I'm gonna show you guys. It's liquidy, but it's not like running from me. It's not going down, see, it's not dripping, but it's liquidy it, and it can be very thin. You can apply very thin, but because it's very liquidy, it means that if you go with a sponge, can you guess what's gonna happen? Your sponge is going to suck half of the foundation, most likely 
apply this with a brush and you can always go after with a beauty blender or a sponge just patting to kind of like erase any brush marks and give it a more soft finish now the elf camo cream i've shown you guys this is much darker than my skin but i want you to see how thick it is see it's a drop it's not going anywhere it's having the best time of its life yeah you see it's like a moisturizer almost and we have some <laughs> they are more liquidy like the mag face and body which like they are water i don't know if this one has silicones i don't think so i'm going to be careful here because it will drop see it's closer to water than to any other foundation that i have here i love it it makes it extremely natural so if you want a very natural look it's a great choice choose which one you want another thing that is very important is if you don't have much makeup and you don't want to have much makeup you can just have one foundation and that's it i myself think i have already too much because i don't like foundation that much i prefer concealer but the thing is you can have one foundation that is medium coverage even a little higher and even if you don't like that for the day to day you can just mix your foundation with your primer or with a moisturizer and then you're gonna make it much lighter in coverage which will give you much more natural look so that means it's gonna make it more dewy so if you don't like the dewy look that is a problem you will have to you know have two different foundations or you can also go for a baby cream a cc cream a moisturizer with coverage or even a sunscreen with coverage those are harder to find color matches so be careful so today i'm going to apply half of my face with the mac face and body so you guys can see i'm putting it directly on my face because i already know the product i don't recommend it if you're not very familiar with the product because you can easily apply so much product and that will make your face look cakey even with something like this be careful now because it's liquidy the best way to apply is with a brush this type of brush, a dual fiber, you see it has two types of fibers. Sorry, it's dirty because like I use it every day. The only fibers that go to the end are the white ones. The black ones stop before, but they make it fluffy. So they make the white ones not be as glued together, which makes it have a finish that is more natural and airy. So if you want to tone down your foundation, like I usually do with my Rare Beauty, I use this one, which makes it more airy, more toned down, more natural and makes it just perfect. Perfect. If you already have something that is very liquidy like this and you want to get a little more coverage, go for something more dense or even more dense like this. And if you have something with high coverage and you want to take away from it, use a sponge, humid sponge, not damp, okay? Not dripping water, like take all the water excess and go in. In my case, I just want to maintain the color here. So I'm going with a very dense one because I know that this foundation never builds up. It has like a max and it tops out and there's nothing you can do. And I like that. It makes it very natural. I don't need a lot of correction today, so it's fine by me. You can barely tell, right, the coverage. You can, you can barely tell the difference. That's exactly what it does. This is great for beginners. It's just like, let's make it uniform. Let's just make it a little bit uniform. No one can tell. No one can tell you wearing makeup. See, makeup, no makeup. It's almost imperceptible, but it just gives you a little like health glow. Because I have primer and I took care of my skin before, it's basically imperceptible. But if you have a little more problems, this both sides will look a little more different. But it does top out in like very low coverage. Okay, this is very natural. And in the other side, I'm going for my Rare Beauty. So I'm going to show you something very different. Medium coverage, a little more matte. They say it's natural. I don't think it is, but let's see. I'm not going to apply more than that because I know this product and I don't like it when it gets too built up. And I'm going with this brush because that's the kind of application I want out of it. Do you see? Do you see? It's a lot very pigmented. You have to be really careful. I can see it already dried up here. Like it's not necessarily bad, but it's not what I like. <laughs> Let's say it like that. Okay. So I guess you can see that this side of my face has a lot more coverage and this one it's it shows through a little more the initial colors like the actual colors of my skin like down here so just so I don't look crazy I'm going in with what I have here and I'm just tap it a little more here. Yeah, I have to apply there, there's no way. It's too different. If you want to look natural, always take a lot of care about the areas where your face meets all the parts of your body because if there is a line there, it's going to be obvious for everyone. So blend it carefully and go down on your neck too. So it's like it fades out slowly and it's not like 
harsh line. There are other type of foundations that I don't have, but there are powder foundations. So I always keep my samples that I like to test without buying like full size products, it's great. So this is a new foundation from Makeup Forever and it's powder foundation. So that's gonna mattify your face. So that's good for oily skin. If you have dry skin, yeah, it's a no go. Uh, that's too extreme of a finish for someone with such a different need. This is from Westman Atelier. It's awesome, it's great. I used up the sample. It's more natural, very liquidy. Do you see like the texture, very liquidy. So it's gonna give you like natural, dewy, low coverage finish which is great for people that want natural makeup looks same thing could be said about this makeup forever reboot it's a little thicker i think it's a little closer to natural not radiant necessarily not dewy finish but it looks extremely healthy on the skin every time you go for full coverage you're thinking i want to look snatched for photos and film it will most likely not look natural in real life you know in person which is okay it's a necessity so you have to be clear on what type of look you want in the end not all makeup is gonna look terribly cakey or terribly fake like a mask on you not all makeup is going to give you flawless look in film and recording so i hope you like this video thank you for subscribing commenting liking all the chats and most importantly i hope you have an awesome day see you in the next one bye